Hi everyone, thank you for coming to our session. My name is Higuchi Satoru, and my co-presenter is Belinda, and we are from Panasonic Corporation. We greatly appreciate to get an opportunity to give presentation in Sunday second annual first conference. Today we will present the ongoing quest for manufacturing cyber resilient IoT devices. In this session, we introduce how we as a manufacturer try to make our IoT devices resilient against cyber attacks. Before I start the session, please allow me to introduce myself briefly. I am part of the Product Security Center, which is responsible for product security within Panasonic. Some of my previous jobs include system development for SOX, network integration such as implementing IDS sensors, etc. I joined Panasonic in 2018 and I'm currently involved in IoT security. Let's take a look at what is happening with IoT around the world. As you probably know, the number of cyber attacks continue to grow. In 2018, over 20,000 billion attack packets were observed on the Internet. Moreover, about half of those observed attacks targeted IoT devices such as web cameras, routers, etc. What this means is that IoT devices are being targeted by attackers in addition to traditional information systems. This data shows the number of malware samples collected by Kaspersky. They have been collecting IoT malware samples since 2016. The number of collected samples more than tripled from 2017 in just the first half of 2018. Do you remember Mirai? It was notable IoT malware discovered in September 2016. Since then, the number of IoT malware has suddenly increased. This is a very scary fact. So besides some of those scary numbers, various articles have been published in the media related to IoT malware and the type of attacks they are causing. Some articles provide more details than others about the attack or the techniques used by attacker to infect large number of devices. And we as manufacturers want to ensure that our products don't become infected. If our company name appears in any article, uh, not only is this a technical risk in that our products are vulnerable, but it also becomes a reputational risk in that general public will know that our products are vulnerable. Thus, uh, it is important for us to understand the threat landscape in regard to IoT devices and proactively protect our product from such attacks. Malware infects a large number of devices, and attacker use those devices to attack another target in a DDoS attack. Since most of those attacks involve devices for which the user has no idea that they are infected, much less know they are part of a larger attack, we need to protect our user proactively. It is important for us manufacturers to provide devices that don't get infected and thus our users don't unknowingly become part of such DDoS attacks. As these threats have continued to increase, various governments across the globe have become active in creating regulation to secure IoT. This slide lists some of regulation related to securing IoT devices. In the United States, there are some federal law as well as some state law to govern IoT security. In Europe, the EU has put out some regulations which each of its member states are implementing. And China has a nationwide cybersecurity law to govern the entire country, while Japan has issued some regulations as well. So with all that was just said, how can we as a manufacturer take action to protect our product and users? This graphic shows the various stakeholders that surround manufacturers like Panasonic. The important thing to note is that collaboration with those various stakeholders is necessary to improve product security overall. One other thing that we must always keep in mind is that our customers will always expect the manufacturer to ensure security of its products. And as manufacturer, satisfying our customers' expectation is critical to our business. Next, I will introduce existing activity for product security at Panasonic. 
Cyber attacks are considered a major corporate risk at Panasonic, and preventing cyber attacks to protect company assets is critical. To protect Panasonic from cyber attacks, three main pillars have been established. The first on the left is IT security, which focuses on securing the corporate IT infrastructure. This is a team commonly established within most organizations. The other two are more unique to manufacturers such as Panasonic. Skipping over to the right is factory security, which focuses on securing the factories and the systems that manufacture our products. Lastly, in the middle of the image is product security, which focuses on the security of various products that are shipped from our business unit worldwide. The three teams collaborate on common issues, for example, sharing vulnerability information and uh, any incident response that may be necessary. And now, focusing on product security. All activities for product security are to support the Panasonic brand, as it is critical to ensure that users of Panasonic products can have a peace of mind that the product is safe and secure to use. To accomplish this, there are two main activities, minimize risk and the incident response. The former is group of activities undertaken prior to shipment and uh, later after shipment. The base of those activities is aimed to provide technical knowledge of security vulnerabilities and how to address them, as well as awareness to the development team about current security trend. All activities for product security are designed to ensure security throughout the entire product life cycle. The green items here are for pre-shipment, and the red items here refer to any post-shipment response. The product security center at Panasonic provides support to internal developers throughout the product life cycle. For some of the items, such as threat analysis and uh, secure design, we provide guidelines and uh, other supporting documents for assistance. This shows the product security incident response framework at Panasonic. The PISAT cooperates with external organizations such as FAST, security vendors, coordination centers, and academia to coordinate any reported vulnerability in our products. PSAT has a publicly accessible con contact where vulnerability can be reported by external stakeholders. Once a PSAT receives the report, analysis is performed to ensure that the report is legitimate and there is enough information for the developer to verify the reported vulnerability. After this is done, the PSAT will distribute the report to the affected division. As we just presented, Panasonic has been taken various actions to make our products secure, but challenges still remain. The response to those challenges is the reason why we started Panasonic IoT Threat Intelligence Project. One of the main challenges is that typically, incident response require a trigger such as internal or external notification of a potential issue. This means incident response requires vulnerability information to be reported. We believe that by proactively collecting and analyzing the threat information by ourselves, we can utilize this information to make our products more secure. This was the concept behind the Panasonic IoT Threat Intelligence Project. This is the overview of Panasonic IoT Threat Intelligence Platform. This platform consists of three main parts. First one is collection. We have deployed a honeypot to collect attack and malware targeting our products. Second part is analysis. We analyze the data collected by the honeypot. Third part is protection. Our goal is to strengthen overall IoT security in our product by utilizing the analysis data. Next, I will provide more detail about each part. First is correction. This slide shows the current progress of the entire project. 
we have two types of honeypots. One is a software honeypot, and the other is actual Panasonic IoT devices. As you can see the photo on the right, we have a showroom that displays the actual products, the correct incoming threat to itself. In addition to this, as a manufacturer, we have the ability to be able to deploy product in development. This can be a big advantage because it gives us a ability to collect threat information before shipment. We can take measures to address any newly discovered vulnerability or threat. This is an activity that was recently started. We currently have two observation points, Taiwan and Japan. In the near future, we plan to increase observation point and include US, EU, India, APAC, China. Second part is analysis. The collection of malware targeting IoT home appliance is ongoing. Presently, we have collected many malware targeting various CPU architectures. More detail on this will be provided later in the presentation. We perform behavior analysis specialized for IoT malware. Internally, we have defined IoT malware as any malware targeting the following CPU architectures, MIPS, ARM, ARC64, PPC, and SH4. Moreover, we have automated the analysis process from malware collection to statistical analysis to reduce the amount of necessary manpower. If we find any interesting behavior in a particular piece of IoT malware, we will analyze it more deeply by hand. Third part is protection. For us, this is the most important phase in our quest to make our product more secure and resilient against attack. We have started to share broad attack overview and IoT malware analysis reports to product developer in this year. Our next challenge is to analyze risk against our products, include those that are under development. We plan to categorize and analyze attack using a framework such as MITRE ATT&CK. Then we will analyze any targeted vulnerability against our products to assess countermeasures specific to our product. Finally, we hope to provide this analysis as helpful feedback to our developers so they can utilize this feedback to make our product more secure. This is a quick summary of some data points from November 2017 to June 2020. We have observed over 600 million attacks and captured 56,000 malware samples. About 20% of those samples have been categorized as IoT malware. Within those samples, we observed an interesting example that attempt to infect a home electronic device by tracing a malicious file. For the observed malware, after analysis, it was found that the top 10 destination IP address that they attempt to connect to were malicious site. And the top three destination country were USA, China, Japan. Hi everyone, I'm Belinda, a security engineer in Panasonic Cybersecurity Lab, located in Taiwan. I joined Panasonic from last year and in charge of part of Panasonic IoT Stray Intelligent Playphone. Thanks for Higuchi san's introduction about the whole picture of the protection in our company. Next, I will talk about some interesting funding from our system and how we can use those data to, in to help our developer. First, as Higuchi san mentioned before, we built an IoT Hyony part to collect wild attack during 2019 and 2020. There are many data we collect. Based on those data, we did some analysis and try to find some useful information for our internal use. There are two very interesting findings we found out from the attack. Uh, as we all know, the attack always increase after a new CVE come out. One of the peaks we observed is in December 2019. 
is the attack that attacking to MS SQL. The attacker trying to use a weak password to log in and stole the malware to our system, to our honeypot system. Uh, we also observed that the MS SQL attack decreased cont continuously since December 2019, from 6 million to 600 million to 0.25 million. The second pick is related to the call stranger, which is the UPnP vulnerability. We believe is that attacker trying attacker or research, we are not sure, uh, trying to tr find out what kind of or which device are available for this availability. So there are a lot of post scan or a lot of uh, attack in this appearance. In April 2020, the first place still MS SQL. However, it's dropped down in May. And in June 2020, the first place is UPnP from China and US, which very makes sense because the call stranger CVE come out in June 2020. And we also found out that even though they're a little different, but there is always include uh, Telnet, SSH, and UPnP in top five uh, targets service because we thought, we, we believe it's because they are a very common use service for the IoT device. And we also find out that uh, most of the attacker are from China and the US, which uh, very makes sense. This chart is the attack trend against home IoT appliance. The Attack number of security camera is the top one. We believe the reason is that the screen camera, the security camera always opens some common service, for example, web and UPnP. Other appliances don't open those service at all. Uh, so the attack number is much lower than security camera. The other reason is that some appliances use our their customized service. The phone number are different or others are some, something are different from the regular default setting service. So that makes those attack number very low. And the most of the attack are just post scan, even not with any payload at all. Let's go deep for attack against two security camera. The top two attack source country are China and the USA. And almost all of the attack are against to UPnP and HTTP, which the web interface. We also acknowledge that uh, for a UPnP, it's most of the most of the attack for UPnP are MS search message, which is the post scan could be an attack trying to find a valuable device for SSD reflection attack or launch SSD reflection attack, which related to, we mentioned before in uh, June 2020, the call strangers attack for UPnP. As Hikushin san mentioned before, we also use our product as a physical honeypot, like we open some uh, Samba service, open some UPnP service, open some web service, which is very commonly used in IoT device. So as we open the same bus service, we, we did not add any protection. We don't have any author, authentication for the service. So which means that everyone can easily uh, access the share folder. As a result, as a reason, uh, we find out there are many interesting Simple in the share folder. The first one is we found out they will have some malware use some same availability to attack the service. So uh, there is a same cry attack payload in the uh, honey part. The second one is we find out there are some temp uh, post scan file in the share folder which means the 
attacker will try to use a map as a post scan attack, as a post scan, but it will put a test file in the short folder in the beginning. The last one is we found out that there is a there is a tag file which uh, there is a malware which not specific for IoT device. It's for Windows, however, uh, it's still use sandbar exploit uh, to to uh, to place it in the shell folder. Even though he which is not mentioned before, they may some are someone still very question about how can we do with those data and how can we benefit or how can we take some advantage for those data? How can we use those data to benefit our develop or benefit all the life cycle of our product? And is those data actually used for? And as we are not a security company, is those data are qualified or useful for our develop? Those questions are keep coming out and are trying to give some uh, answer in this session. The first one is, how can we do for the develop? That's a very interesting question because in the beginning we thought maybe we can give them some IOC like the IP, the DN or some CVE number. They maybe think that will be very important for them. But in the end, no, no. That's not what they care. They care about what's the high risk service. They care about uh, how the malware get into a device, but they don't care who is the attacker before the group and what kind of device being affected by other, uh, what's the other company's device being affected. That's not the thing they care about. So it's quite different for us because when I was in a security company, most of the per, uh, most of the uh, com uh, company they trying to get more C uh, IOC or more CVE information. But when you go to talk to actually talk to the develop, you will know. What are they care about is they want to know more about their product. They want to know how can they actually use those information to import their product security. So that's very important for them to know the things which happening in their product. So we use uh, their product as a physical honey part to see what kind of attack actually happen in their product. And if that succeeds or not, or it will affect your service or not. And because those attacks are from wild, so they will think that if the product are actually released, it will happen the same situation in this kind of environment. So that's very cool thing is that which we thought the IOC is very important for them, but no, I think for right now we observe that uh, what the most things they care about is how the malware get into the device. But we're still trying to find out the best way for them to provide the most useful information. And this is also the question we still trying to do our best because uh, we still have a lot of negotiation or discussion with the developer and trying to find and provide the best uh, report or best information for them to improve our product security. For management, we are really lucky in Panasonic because our manager is very support this kind of security project. They give us a lot of space and trying to see what kind of things we can do. Right now, we do have regular meeting with the manager and high level manager to provide some interesting funding from our system and our pro uh, and our project. And we will provide them some attack trend to see what's happening for IoT security right now. And we're trying to do more than that so we, we can help them to understand the risk and also the reason behind the attack 
for them to do a better understanding about the attack and also try to help them go down the risk to improve our product security. And we also provide some security training for the manager for them to have more understand about what kind of things they can do and to do those decisions is that anything will affect the security and how can they raise down the risk and those things are uh, we're trying to do for for the manager and based on our straight platform we also provide some regular we try we also want to provide some regular report for them and also for each unit we will we want to have more specific uh, report and more detail so those things are we trying to do and continue to discussion with the manager and also have more uh, negotiate or more discussion with the uh, unit right now and we believe those are very important for the manager and also very important for our product security. For the community contribute is the goal we always trying to do and trying to reach. And we found out that over 30% of the malware in our data are not being uploaded to virus total. So there is an idea that we thought that may be useful for other company too, or other community too. So right now we do have some discussion with uh, some company to collaborate, exchange those uh, IOC data or those uh, intelligence. And even though uh, there is already a lot of data or a lot of IOT honeypot, but for our perspective that uh, is more focused on manufacturing. So our information and our data are more useful to focus on the manufacturing. They, they may be a little different within the security company. That's one of the good things for us. And we're trying to use those information uh, to improve our product security. And we also uh, one those information can help the community and also help your company. So we are welcome to have more uh, opportunity to co-op with you guys. So what's our next step? Right now we're trying to collect more data from a physical honey part because right now we're trying to build more physical honey part for collect more data and more focus on our product and to see what happening in those attack and is that success or not and it will actually happen uh, to affect our product or not and after those uh, data be collect we trying to do more analyze right now maybe we can just give them some regular information but we're trying to do more about uh, more for them like we're trying to mapping those attacks to our products in development with the standard framework like the matrix or like other OWASP or something like that to let the develop and also the manager know, manager know what's actually happening for in their product and for our security perspective, it's more easy for us to control those risk, uh, risk. And we also want to cooperate with the industrial to see if the global chain match loads attack against to our product and other companies' product. And we also want to improve the whole uh, security for those for the manufacturers uh, industry. Thanks for uh, your attention. That's my part for today's sharing. Thank you.